What's up everybody, it's Mike here, and today we're doing a full review of the Cobra S1. So a few things to cover real quick. I have not been paid for this review. I purchased this on Amazon with my own money. So therefore, I am gonna be 100% honest, give you everything I think you should know before picking up this printer. All right, so first things first, I'm gonna have a few links down below. We're gonna discuss the price. So I believe I paid a total of $486 on Amazon for this printer. I bought it on Amazon so that way I had the return policy because I had heard differing things about Anycubic and how long they take to send the printer. I used Amazon Prime so that way I could get this relatively quickly. So with that being said, you can also order these through eBay and also through Anycubic's website. Currently right now they are running deals on Amazon. I saw the Anycubic combo at $599. I put a link down below for that. It is an affiliate link. So if you order through that, I do get a commission and they're also running some sort of promotion which gives me even more commission. So if you wanna support the channel, you can buy it through that link. You can also get it on eBay, which I think is actually the best deal right now. They're offering a 20% off coupon for Memorial Day. Um, so for that, I believe it comes out to about 560 plus taxes. This was 600 in taxes on Amazon. Then on any Cubic's website, it's actually the most expensive, which is kind of weird, at $699. If you're just looking for the basic version like I have here, it should run you about $400. I paid $450 before they lowered the price, but it's $400 on Amazon and eBay, and I believe like $450 or $500 on their website. So getting into the review, I'm gonna mention a few quick things that Anycubic actually advertises about the printer, and it's their selling points. I kind of feel like when you see this, you see it on every 3D printer. It's at 600 millimeters per second. Um, on top of that, you also have, it prints all of the filaments, right? It prints your ABS, your ASA, down to your PETG and your PLA. With it being fully enclosed, that allows you to trap the heat in, so that way you can continually print the ABS in the ASA or anything that requires a higher temperature inside the chamber. Of course, it supports multicolored printing as well if you go ahead and purchase the combo or you purchase the ACE system after. You can purchase them separate and then buy the ACE system later if you wanted to. That would cost more though, so if you're looking into multicolored printing, I would recommend getting a combo. Um, if you don't want to multicolor print at all because you're just printing props and replicas, then of course you don't need it. So everything you're seeing here right now, I printed on the Cobra S1. With that being said, I have about 141 hours of print time currently on the printer. I didn't quite hit that 150 mark that I like to do uh, before I hit a full review or I was saying I was gonna do, but I don't think the nine hours is gonna make the difference on my opinion here. Hopefully, at least, right? I could have the whole printer die after that. But with that being said, I think I got some really good prints off this. So let me go ahead and give you a closer look at the stuff that we printed. All right, so just quick disclosure, I'm about to show quite a few prints and how they came out. So if you wanna skip through after watching a couple, you can, but I just wanted to give you the forewarning that there are quite a few prints to check out. So here's an R2-D2 that I printed in an Elegoo Silk PLA. You can see consistently on a lot of these prints, I'm getting like this weird line right there where it like didn't extrude properly. And then also it looks like maybe a slight, really slight layer shift right here. I mean, overall, if you're just looking at this print, I think it looks great. You're not gonna notice if it's sitting up on a shelf at a far distance. Um, maybe also this PLA make you notice it a little more. I'm not sure, but you can see there, it almost looks like a band right here in the middle of the print. Um, it's a consistent issue with this printer that I wasn't really able to solve that it just looks like it has slight layer shift. So here is a smaller version, same thing. Look, you can even see right here, there's a, like, it's a major gap right there. Um, you know, overall, I, you know, for the most part, again, I don't think it really matters, but you can see here, these, these are two silk filaments. Um, it handled them really well. I, I mean, I don't think something like this is a big deal to me, but if you're looking for like print perfection, I mean, you're probably in a different price range anyway with printers, but overall it looks pretty good. Um, I don't really have a complaint, but like, you, like I said, you can see that little bit there. Um, to solve this issue, I actually put it on, I had it on a wobbly tabletop um, and I moved it over to a more stable being like this right here. This, this shelf is really stable and I still had this issue. So just showing off a lot of what the printer can do, this whole thing was actually printed at a PETG and it looks like, maybe it is like rods or something someone mentioned in one of the comments. It looks like it's in a relatively similar spot. Let me go ahead and grab the other one. So maybe one of them is, but then it printed fine up here. But overall, again, this is just like, that was a consistent issue that I ran in with the printer. Um, 
Nothing really changed though for me. Again, I, I still think this printed good for being a PET G filament with a decent amount of details. I'm just gonna go over the rest of them pretty quickly. You can see here, there's quite a few layer lines. Um, this is when I had it on my wobbly workbench. So these print, this print at least didn't come out as smooth. I think a lot of the layer shifts were fixed when I moved it over to the sturdy workbench. This big old flexi rexy, same thing, just on the bottom here, but overall it's passable. This is something I just printed for my niece. And then I got into just printing a whole bunch of parts uh, for my super battle droid. So you can see here, I didn't take out some of the supports down there. Like it's just this slight shifting all of the time. Um, I'll show you a few more parts that kind of have similar issues. So this one looks pretty clean for the most part. Like if you're feeling it though, you can definitely feel these areas. Um, and then right here, like it's it's pretty bad. If you're looking for a completely smooth print, right? Maybe um, you can definitely see all the layers here. I didn't realize it was this bad until I started looking in the camera. Um, but I, I mean, guys, I'm printing props, so I'm gonna smooth this out and paint it anyway. And like you saw on the silk PLAs, it, it really, I mean, when you're printing in color, it hides it. I guess I should have maybe printed a few more things in color. So maybe I should have printed in more color, but you know, it, it's still passable to me. Um, in some of the prints it does this and some of it doesn't. I feel like I've been getting smoother prints with the silk, um, but you know, I don't know. It's it's not a thousand dollar printer where you're gonna have perfect prints every single time. That's for sure. Um, but I still think it comes out pretty good. And maybe I need to tighten something in there so that way there's not these slight shifts. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think. Maybe you guys have something else that I can try. But this is definitely was definitely a outstanding issue on the printer. And lastly, we got this Scout Trooper helmet. Um, it kind of suffers from the same thing. Actually, there's a big old line right there. Um, this. Overall, I didn't end up using it just because I messed up my supports right here. So this was pretty ugly and it was gonna take a lot for me to fix. Um, again, you can see a lot of this. Maybe this is just normal, but like if I'm feeling it, I can definitely feel all those layer lines. But again, like this is a $450, $400 printer. I'm not expecting perfection. And I think a lot of you would just be happy with this overall, right? If you're looking at it from a distance, can you really tell? Not really. And if you paint this, sand it down, it's not making any difference to you. So I think overall the print quality is passable. It's not fantastic. It's not great. It's passable. And just real quick, I forgot to show this one. This was the same print as the other one. I just needed two of them for my battle droid. It's the same thing. Just also there's a major line right here. So let's go ahead and talk about my pros with the Anycubic Cobra S1. I actually really like this touch screen. Um, you can turn off the beeping sounds, right? That's not a big deal. Um, but overall the touch screen is, I don't know, I just like it. It feels very fluid, it looks nice. The UI is very nice. When you're loading a filament, it's very easy to load. Um, it really took like less than like two minutes every single time for the nozzle to heat up. You're good to go and you can just feel it slightly pulling. The other thing is with this printer, I actually had like, I don't think I had any fails actually. Um, in the 140 hours of printing, I, I am, I'm trying to think back i had zero fails everything just printed it just worked did they always look the best no because i'm still dialing in a lot of the filaments on this printer but overall all of the printer or the all of the prints they just printed they they just worked um i ran the leveling on it every single time and it just worked i do like that this is plastic at least the door personally i think the look of it is pretty good especially when you close the door it does drown out a lot of the sound um, that also can be a negative to some people, but overall, I like the plastic. It, it doesn't matter to me. I'm not worried now that I'm going to break this every single time I touch it. Um, but you know, that that's an opinion that not everyone may hold the same. I still think most of the prints, again, I think they were passable. I don't think they were great. I don't think they were fantastic, but like the silk ones, I think those are okay, especially if they're just sitting on a shelf. Um, so again, this thing just prints, it prints well. Um, yeah, I actually do like Anycubic's app. It kind of seems like they're doing something similar to Bamboo Labs. Of course, it kind of seems like a pretty much copy of their app. Um, I will speak more about the app because there are some good features in it, but it does have some downsides. Um, but overall, I do like that they're at least attempting to build an app so you can monitor your 3D printer when you're not at home. I'll be honest, honestly, it's hard for me to come up with positives for 3D printers. And my negative list is gonna be a lot more hefty right after this. But at the end of the day, the printer does what it's supposed to do, right? So I don't really rate that as a positive. It prints, it, for the most part, the prints look good. Um, just minor nitpicks where I was showing you guys the layer shifts and weird things going on. 
Um, but outside of that, let's go ahead and get into the negatives. This is more of a nitpicky thing. Once you start the calibrations and you start a print on the printer, you can't stop it. I find myself, I have to like manually switch the printer off, which is no big deal. But sometimes I realize like, hey, I forgot to set the filament temp correctly, uh, temp correctly, um, or maybe I didn't set the bed temp correctly. And to have to wait for the printer to go through all of the calibrations, which is like five minutes sometimes if you set them all up, um, that's kind of annoying. Moving on to the app, um, the only way you can find out how many hours you have on this printer is through the app. That seems to not make sense. What if someone never wants to connect to the internet and then all of a sudden they go sell this printer to somebody? Uh, that person might be in for a surprise once they connect the app to this printer. Now that's like something minor, like if anyone ever sold these printers to someone on the marketplace, but it's something that people could get away with, which might be a little, a little weird. I think you need to manually add this in the settings or all right, not that you need to manually add. I think they should have this in the settings so that way if anyone were to ever resell this printer, they know what they're getting. Now, talking more about the app, it's good, but it doesn't really work. I can't tell you how many times I wanted to check and see if my printer was printing and the camera just loads. It, it never works. Um, a lot of people mentioned download wrinkles and disable the app as well, which wrinkles is something I didn't talk about this, I'll touch on at the end, um, but it just, the, the camera just doesn't work. Outside of the app, it doesn't work. I tried it on the desktop slicer, half the time it's just loading. It, if you're gonna have a feature, it needs to work. Um, so it's like the camera's there and you're paying for the camera right in the printer, but it, it just doesn't work. I, I, I don't know, I, it, it worked at the beginning and then once I did the latest software update, it just, I, I don't know, it, it takes forever to load and it just doesn't work. Um, the filament, spool is in the back. I didn't realize how nice it was having it on the side of the Centauri Carbon until I used this printer. It is crazy for me to reach back there and I have to turn this printer every single time I want to load different filament. It's not a huge deal or a deal breaker because lots of printers have it in the back, but it is rather annoying. Um, in the Anticubic Slicer, I actually don't mind when you know, these companies are making their own slicer based off of Orca. To me, it doesn't matter. If you're buying printers in the same ecosystem, It again, it doesn't matter. Um, but what does matter is the lack of profiles in, in the Anticubic Slicer. There's not very many profiles. Like, like if you know your filament inside and out, you can go ahead and you know update everything manually. But when someone wants to go in there, they just wanna enter what they have and then it just prints. Um, Anticubic is very limited on the profiles that they add. Um, you know, I don't know, like there's just not many profiles. You, you need to add more profiles and you know, use other filaments, add Overture's filament, add all these other brands of filament so that way, you know, you make it very easy if your customer bought your printer, not they're stuck with just any cubic stuff. With that being said, with profiles, they only have one type of nozzle that is stock on this printer and it's the 0.4. Now they are available on Anycubic's website. They weren't originally when I first got this printer and there is aftermarket nozzles available. But in the slicer, there's only one nozzle available. It's the 0.4 and hopefully you guys don't hear that cricket in the background, it's crazy. It starts at the most inconvenient time. But there's only one stock nozzle available at the 0.4. So if you wanna print anything else, you can't outside of just using a 0.4 nozzle. Um, that might even be a deal breaker for a lot of people who are printing larger things at 0.6 um, or even 0.8, you know, you're stuck with just a 0.4. Now, again, like I said, there are aftermarket like available options, but I think you should offer this stock as a company. I don't think there's really any excuse not to have anything outside of a 0.4 nozzle. Now I did touch on this briefly in my initial review video. They do have a few aftermarket parts available for the Cobra S1 um, that you can go to their website and buy. I've never had to deal with customer service if you need to go through customer service. Um, so that is something to think about. Um, there are mixed reviews online about customer service, but again, I haven't had to deal with them and some people love them, some people hate them. Um, so yeah, it's just a mixed bag overall there. Um, so I can't really comment on a customer service for my own. That's just what I've read on the internet. One thing I did forget to add about the slicer is that if you want to use like the re resonance or whatever it is, like the vibration compensation in the printer, if you want to use any sort of the AI, if you want to use um, bed leveling, all these features, time lapse, you have to enable them after every single print. And I found that honestly really annoying. I don't, I didn't think it would bother me that much, but. If you have to go and click all those things, and not all those things are available on the printer. So if you were just using it like through a jump drive, some of them are not available to use unless you're connected to the app. 
I found the AI kind of useless, honestly, the few times I enabled it. There was only one print that I had, I guess now that I'm thinking about it, one print I had fail, and that was in my initial review video where the filament got tangled and it started printing air, similar to my Centauri Carbon, um, and the AI didn't catch it. So I guess what was the point of AI? Maybe it's only for spaghetti, which, you know, I, I don't know. Like it, to me, just please make it available where it saves your settings and I don't have to click them every single time because if you're using all five themes, things, the time lapse, the vibration compensation, the AI, and then you have bed leveling. And I think there's one other thing I'm missing. That's five different boxes you have to check mark every single time you go to print. Please just let me save the settings. Now, going into my overall thoughts on the printer. Honestly, it works. It prints. Um, is it worth $450, $400? I think so. Um, for the most part, it's going to do everything you want. It is one of the cheaper multicolored Core XY systems out there. I know a lot of you guys have bought them as well in my comment section, and you were kind of curious on my view. Again, it's very easy to go over negatives with these printers. I find it hard to go over positives because it's just operating as it should be. So, I mean, overall, it works. Again, I've only had one fail the entire time I've been using this printer. Um, you know, if you're not looking for like the best, the most calibrated things, like I could probably fix even some of those layer shift things that I had going on with the printer. I've seen people even buy like the aftermarket nozzle and it fixes it. So there's a few things I could try to try to fix that. But honestly, it hasn't been a big deal to me, right? I have the Bamboo Lab A1, I have the Centauri Carbon. Um, so I have other printers available to me if I needed something really perfect that I really have tuned in. Um, my Bamboo A1 is my go-to for that. So if you're, especially if you're operating um, the multicolored, it is something to consider. Uh, I, overall, I think it's a pretty good printer. Um, I might lean more towards if you're going for a multicolored and you're only using PLA towards the Bamboo Lab A1. I do have the multicolor for that system and it works pretty flawlessly for the most part. Um, so I wouldn't really see a need in multicolored on my Core XY any cubic here. Um, outside of that, just speaking like freely, again, I, I don't really uh, have any sort of scripts when I do these. I just have bullet points sometimes that I know I want to talk to. Like I wrote down like my negatives. But again, it's really easy to come up with negatives. Now, if you're deciding between this and a few other printers and you really want the multicolored system, I think uh, if, if you're looking at trying to print ABS and other filaments, this is probably your best option, honestly, because on other printers, the multicolored system is not even available yet. We don't know how long you're going to be waiting. If you're only a PLA printer, I think take a look at the Bamboo Lab A1. Yes, it's not a Core XY. It's not the fastest printer on the market, but it just works. I love mine. I have about 1,100, 1,200 hours on that thing. And honestly, I would buy another one, but I really want to give you guys my experience with these other printers so I can speak truthfully and honestly. Um, outside of that, if you guys have any questions on the printer, please let me know down below. I'm sure when I'm editing this, I'll throw some stuff in here or I'll forget that I added or I'll for, I'm sure when I'm editing this, I'll realize I forgot to talk about stuff. And if I can, I'll throw it back in the review. But you know, I, again, I'm a free flower. We're speaking from the, the brain, just I'm making this stuff as this stuff up as I go right now. So outside of that guys, um, I do think it's a pretty solid printer. Um, I do want to start giving like maybe a grade or a, a review like score overall to my printer reviews. Um, I'm going to come up with some sort of spreadsheet so that way you guys can track and I can link you guys to like maybe like a share drive of just what I've graded each printer in each category. So I think that would be good, especially for these lower budget printers. Um, I will directly compare this to the Elegu Centauri Carbon in an upcoming video, probably out next week. Uh, I've been printing like these same R2D2s and stuff on the Centauri Carbon so we can directly compare. Um, outside of that, guys, again, if you have any questions, please comment down below, like the video, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you guys want to see next. I'm always working for the people, right? I read every single comment as well, and I hope you guys enjoy your weekend.